Good morning. What is up? Happy Tuesday. Another Tuesday, another set of shenanigans. Woo -woo. So excited because today we are doing things a little differently and we're not going to be, you know, giving everybody some tips and tricks and really um, not offering advice as much and stuff. Um, this one's going to be just a little bit more of, you know, letting you guys know that you're not alone in this crazy world, um, and hopefully bringing a little bit of clarity, um, to real estate. And especially if you're new and stuff, because, you know, people don't really share a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, whether you're new or seasoned or whatnot, it's kind of fun to pull back the curtains a little bit and share a little bit about, you know, the realities of stuff. So today we're going to be talking about the real truths about being a real estate agent and what people don't really talk about. Yeah, we've compiled an entire list. And I don't think that so I worked in real estate before I even got my real estate license. Um, and I still didn't know this stuff. So I hope it helps. Should we get started? Yeah, right let's in. do it. And and we're going to do, we kind of split this up into two things and we're going to kind of talk about like all the hard parts and all that stuff so that we can end with the fun and the good stuff. So let's jump in with, you know, the kind of the, the bummy side of real estate. <laughs> so nobody tells you when you get your license or when you're sitting in pre-licensing class, every single role that you are going to take on as a real estate agent. So we get our license, we hang ourselves with a brokerage and we order a name tag. And that name tag typically says realtor or real estate agent, agent, some type of title. It does not give you the title of therapist because <laughs> people don't know what they want even when they think they do. Um, inspector. They want you to know things before they go under contract. And you're like, I don't know. We have to get a home inspector out. Um, they want you to know the cost of repairs before you go under contract or after you go under contract. And you're like, I don't know. we got to call the contractor. They, oh, my favorite are the people who want you to be their tour guide. They come in for vacation, especially us, because we live in a beach town. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, oh, we're here from vacation. We'd like to check out some houses while we're here. Not to buy, but because it's fun. Um, the financial planner, they want you to be a psychic and know what the market's going to look like in 10 years and if this is a good decision for them. Um, they want you to be their negotiator, which, yes, that's part of the job. But even when you prepare your clients and tell them exactly how this market is, they still want you to ask for the world sometimes. And um, all of these job titles get lumped into being a real estate agent and it is draining. If you are not in the right headspace when you get started, you're going to struggle a lot. Definitely. Um, also, like I know we've talked about this a little bit in some previous episodes and in some of our trainings and stuff too. But, you know, one of the biggest things is when, you know, you're in pre-licensing or, you know, any of the classes that you have to take before you get your license. I know that's different for every state and stuff, but what they don't really tell you is that you pay your broker, your broker doesn't pay you. So in return, all of the brokers want you and they like can sell you on their company, but you don't know that, that that is happening. You just think like you nailed that interview and nobody told you that you should be interviewing brokers, multiple you brokers. Pick. You get to pick. There's not many yeah. jobs that you get to literally pick where you go every day. And, and Usually people they don't tell, you, tell you, and they don't tell you that there's fees at all these different places and that they're all different everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And if you're not at... There are some real estate schools who will actually bring in a representative from certain firms yep. and they don't tell you that there's 7,000 other firms to interview with other than the one that's speaking and paid for your lunch that day. Or right. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about the fact that you don't work your own hours? What? I was told <laughs> that I get to make my own hours. You don't because if somebody wants to see a house, at seven o'clock and you're like, nope, I'm sorry. Seven o'clock is my dinner time. Somebody else will show it to them. 
Bye. So you, you can make your own hours. Time. Sure, you can. But, <laughs> but you're probably going to lose a couple clients. Now, that's not to say that you have to be a slave to your clients. That's not to say that you shouldn't time block, but just understand that there are times where you are going to be pulled out of a sporting event for your kids or a play or all of these things that you thought you were going to be able to do, you might not be able to do them. Yeah. And you can't, you know, always just show homes between nine and five, because guess what? Most of your clients have jobs. Okay. Um, well, if we they don't, don't have, have a job. They're not buying a house. Bingo. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're going to have to show homes on the nights and the weekends. And, you know, that's one of the things that you kind of have to suck up when you're starting your business. You're not instantly going to start in real estate and have buyer agents and showing assistants and stuff. So you do have to be a little bit flexible. Yeah. And they don't tell you all that. They just say, you can make your own hours, unlimited <laughs> hours of money. They also don't talk about the 10 o'clock at night stuff that you're doing because you ran out of time during the day to get everything done because you were running around after your clients and putting them where they needed to be and meeting with a electricians and you know you did take an hour to go watch your daughter at gymnastics or soccer practice or cheerleading and then because you took that hour out during the day you have to make it up at 10 o'clock midnight sometimes four o'clock when you wake up and realize you messed up and you have to fix something or you know that brings me into you know the minute that you go on vacation or take a day off or have that soccer game or something that you have to go to that's when the world of real estate blows up and everybody like they got to go see this home right now before it goes under contract they they got to list their home tomorrow i mean they think that the world is on fire and you have to drop whatever you're doing right. and run out there and do it i mean it never fails the minute you go on vacation you can have yeah. nothing going on for weeks up until then and the minute you leave town, that's when everybody wants to talk to you. Well, you can almost go at it as like, okay, my business is a little slow. So I'm going to go ahead and plan a vacation. Yes. Just do Even that. Even if you later. don't intend to go on the vacation, just plan the vacation. Also, I think it's worse when you call your clients and tell them like, hey, I just want to prepare you. I'm going to be away from my phone. Um, you know, I might not get back to you right away. I'll be checking my phone at, you know, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Like it like puts them into instant panic that everything has fallen apart, even if it hasn't. Mm -hmm. And that they're not going to be able to reach you when they need it. Yeah. So find a good team. Make sure you have a good team. That's the moral and, and of that story. Typically, there's no real emergencies. That I think they do tell you in real estate school, but they don't tell you how to convey that to your clients. <laughs> I remember hearing yeah. there's no fires in real estate over and over again. But they didn't tell me how to take care of the fires. So that my but they don't tell the you that when the neighbor of your listing calls you because the garage is flooding, what are you supposed to do? Be like, oh, I'm sorry, like I'm busy. I'll get to it it's tomorrow. It's seven o'clock. No. We'll figure it out in the morning. You got to get your shit together and figure it out. So sometimes there are some emergencies. <laughs> but yes, in general. <laughs> and the emergencies do not happen between nine and five. No. no. Ever. That's, that's summit and written rule. Every um, your commission checks sound really big, right? So like you're out showing houses and you're with your client and they go and they look at the $400,000 home and you already start calculating 2.5%. There is not a single real estate agent that's licensed that doesn't know how to do two, two and a half, three, and three and a half percent in their heads of any number. We just know it, right? And you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna get paid. And then you realize, okay, I just spent two hours talking them off the ledge because they changed their mind. And then I spent two hours at the home inspection because they weren't able to be there or we knew it was gonna be ugly. Your dollar per hour dwindles quickly. So yes. That number sounds great, but it dwindles real fast, real fast. Um, reminder, if you're joining us live, to go ahead and click the button to allow StreamYard to see you so that we um, can see who is commenting on the video and interacting. Um, so yes, at the end of that, totally goes into you see that big check, you think that's awesome, and then you don't realize 
you know, all the fees and expenses that come out of it. But people also will expect you to reduce your commissions or pay for repairs or meet in the middle to make some of these deals happen, right? Right. Well, because you're making so much money, why would you not give them your money? Yeah, everybody thinks you're making so much money that, and then everybody has their hands out and wants part of it. My favorite is when you're like talking to a client and they're like, especially in this market right now, because yeah. everyone here is online, like this AirPod. Um, everybody here is online. They're like, hey, the market's so great. You got to sell your house. You know, everybody's making top dollar on their houses. So then your clients are like, oh, this must be a great time for you. And you're like, well, it would be if my market wasn't oversaturated with 70,000 agents. Right. That means, yes, more houses are selling, but less of us are making money. Um, so um, the other thing that I think is really fun and I really appreciate when this happens is when my clients ask me for rebates. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, so-and-so at this relocation company said that they would give me 1% of their commission. So could you do the same thing? No, but I can save you 4% with my negotiation skills. Bam. Or, you know, going with that rebate stuff too, is there's a lot of like referral companies that are lenders and they will bring in, um, you know, they'll do all these advertisings to get the leads for clients for the financing. And then they're like, oh, we're giving you a rebate if you use one of our agents. No, the agent is giving a rebate. The agent is paying a shit ton for you to work with them. And the lender's getting a kickback for that. So then right. they're giving you $500, which is not what they're making. <laughs> um, so another huge thing that they never tell you in real estate, because then you probably wouldn't want to get your real estate license. But that real estate is a roller coaster ride that is always not super fun. Okay, so why is it so damn addicting? Sometimes it's scary and you'll fall off the roller coaster ride because they forgot to lock you in that seat. Um, but it it's just it has so many ups and downs and it's emotional and it's just hard sometimes. And they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that you know you finally make it around the roller coaster, but then you gotta go get back in line and do it all over again. Yeah. And it's sometimes okay. Sometimes that line is like a Disney line where you're going to wait a while <laughs> before you get back on the ride. Where do you sign up for the fast passes? Yes. Take me to the next commission one. I know, but it's like, it feels so good when you're coming down the roller coaster though. You know, yeah. like you come down and you're like, oh, I forget all of the anxiety that caused me to get to this point. This feels great. Yay. Yeah, it feels good when you get the commission check in your bank account. It feels good when you close. It feels good when you make your clients happy. <laughs> it's almost like having a baby. You, you forget all the tormenting time it right. was in that labor. And then you have another baby. And you're like, damn it. I did it again. Did you also know that your real estate license doesn't come with... Um, See, Wendy's on board with me. She wants a fast pass too. <laughs> Did you know you don't get automatic clients with your real estate license? Like when what? your real estate license is mailed to you, it doesn't come with a database. You mean you get your real estate license and people just don't line up at your office waiting no. for you to sell them homes? They don't. And I will say though that a lot of agents, and I've seen this since we've had this little shift in our market. Um, a lot of agents get like that first wind, right? Mm -hmm. So they get their license and they post it all over social media and they're brand new and they don't have any, like they're not jaded in any way, shape or form. So they're so excited about the market and um, they tell everybody that they have their real estate license and everybody wants to use them because they're brand new. Like no, they want to support cool. their friends, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm a top producing agent, it's like the first wind. And then if you don't keep up with it, they kind of fall off track. And then you have to start from the beginning. And then you realize what it's like to go find your clients, to leave. It's generate. almost like the, the beginner's luck. Of real yeah. Estate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
they also don't tell you that it's going to cost a lot of freaking money to get started. That yeah. joining the associations, joining the brokerages, getting signs, cards, the cost of pre-licensing, and then the post-licensing you got to turn around and get done. Um, they don't tell you about the systems that you're going to need that your brokerage doesn't provide. Um, they literally get you in the door and then you feel like it was almost like a bait and switch sometimes, you know, and that's why, like, I work with a lot of brand new agents. See, Wendy says this right now. She's like, you told me it would cost a lot. Yeah. I mean, I try to be very upfront because just like in real estate, like I don't want my clients to be surprised or caught off guard or think that I misled them in any way. So I'm like, listen, like, don't quit your jobs. Because a lot of real estate brokerages are like, oh, you'll never be successful. You got to jump right in. You got to go full time. And I'm like, do not do that because then you're going to fail. And then you're going to need to get a part time job while you're in real estate. So it's right. always best to be completely honest up front and set those expectations. And I think that part of pre licensing should be like, hey, listen, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of expenses and stuff. This might be something that you want to you know, prepare for just like they tell you when you're getting um, a home loan, you know, like you got to plan out your expenses, see what you can afford, you know, where you want to go, because some of these expenses, you don't have a choice. You have to pay them. You have most of brokerages require you to join your local Realtors Association. You can't do that. Well, you without can't find somebody a house if you don't have access to the MLS. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll it's just use Zillow just like you do. It'll be great. It's definitely some sort of monopoly where they require you to join the Realtors Association and then it's tied up into your MLS. So even though being a Realtor is an elusive, like, great thing to be a part of and that not everyone is, the majority of people are because you have to be. Yeah. Well, I think it's funny because so many people decide to get their real estate license because it's so cheap compared to most classes. Well, because you, you don't have to go to school and get a degree sort of stuff. Right, right. But like, um, if you look at the price difference of taking a real estate class versus becoming an appraiser, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars of differences. The yeah. same as a general contractor or an electrician. I mean, you're literally talking thousands of dollars difference. Yeah. And but in some real states, estate gets you on the back end. Well, some of the some of the states getting your um, pre licensing and and joining the MLS board and stuff are several thousands of dollars. We're pretty lucky here in North Carolina, and it's I mean it's expensive. It's expensive for our area, but I think compared to a lot of places, I think um, someone told me like in New York it was like five thousand dollars to like get set up on the real tours and the MLS board and and just those beginning fees. And I mean that's significantly more than it is for us. Yeah. Um, you know, you only, I would say you only use about 5% of what you actually learn in real estate school. I mean, we still know we go through this every single podcast. How many square feet are in an acre? You want me to answer it again? Yep. It's wrong. I know I, I I'm off, but I know that it's like 45,750. <laughs> I just ish. love that you say it with so much confidence every it's time, ish. even though it's a different number every time. <laughs> no, it's that it's it's a roundish that amount. <laughs> but have you ever used that? Only on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn it. So I want a lot of what we're saying today is silly and goofy. It's true, but it's silly. However, the expenses that you must pay in order to be successful and get started in real estate should absolutely be part of your pre-licensing course. Hands down. There's, yeah, it, and, shouldn't, and, it shouldn't even be up for debate. And the post-licensing classes right. should be part of your pre-licensing. Or just package it all together. Exactly. You have to and do it. You don't have a choice. But the courses that they teach you for pre-licensing is basically just to get your license. It has nothing to do with actual working a real estate transaction, like Athena right. said. Right. Um, like we were talking about earlier about how you just don't like get a bunch of real estate clients right away. It takes a while to get your first deal. It takes a while to establish yourself. And it's really important to, to know that up front so that you don't feel like you're failing already. And, you know, again, like not quitting your job because not relying on that money because 
real estate is tip. I mean, obviously our market is a little different right now and you could have a cash deal and close in a week or two, but typically it's 30 to 45 days before you get your first paycheck. If right. you get a buyer or seller under contract today. You know how um, the real estate boards are always like calling and they're asking for donations for certain things. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the things that they should go for is sending people buyer agencies with their real estate license. So then you already have a client started. Yeah, definitely start. Well, you know, I mean, I, you know, you said it earlier, you know, that people are tell their friends and social media and stuff that they're in real estate school. Um, some don't because they don't want to fail and then, you know, have to tell everybody, you know, it didn't right. work out or something. Um, but a lot of people do. And then they have those clients ready to go when they are. But at the same time, you know, <laughs> you don't know if that client is going to be ready to go or if they're going to spend six months looking or yeah. if they have credit repair they needed. Yeah. So we're going to move out of the financial side of things a little bit because the last couple of things we've talked about have been about money, but they don't tell you that just because you have your real estate license, that your friends and family have to use you. In fact, a lot of them don't want to, they don't want to mix business and pleasure. That's how they see it. They see it as business and pleasure. They don't see it as this is literally how you are going to, um, feed your family or send your kids to dance class or whatever it is, you know, that your expenses pay. And um, a lot of people don't realize you're commission based. They just think that you get paid from your firm. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. just joined on with EXP Realty. So she posted it on Facebook. So obviously she's making $200,000 a year. That's great for her. Or they're, they're already working with somebody from your office. So it's fine. Right. That one's a good one. But yeah, they're not obligated to use you because you have a license. You have to prove your worth to them. And you have to remind people that you're in real estate because if you if you were a secret agent, then they don't know. People have such a short-term memory. They literally will go with, or they get drunk at a party and another real estate agent is there and they're like, oh, I've had so many margaritas. Of course you can sell my house. Yeah, that's happened. And, you know, back to how, you know, it, it, your average agent, it takes a while to, you know, close your first transaction and stuff. Inman says that it usually takes a brand new agent six months to one year to close their first transaction. Um, and I'm sure that that's changed a little bit with our market and stuff now, but even with the crazy market, if you don't like put yourself out there and build your business and stuff, then those people who are ready to go are going with established agents. Right. Well, like I just said, yes, there are more homes being sold, but there's more agents. So I think that plays into the six months to a year too, because so many more, I mean, even established agents are starting to kind of feel that pinch where mm -hmm. it might, they might not have as many clients as they typically do. Yeah. So, um, this, statistic. And I'm going to say it's a statistic because it is like, we didn't just pull this number from anywhere. This is not meant to scare you. It's meant to motivate you. And it is all in how you look at it and comprehend it. But there is an 80% chance that in two years after getting your license, you will have left the business. Yeah, that's so and depressing. So I hope everybody uses that. Literally, this is what you take from it, right? Take that statistic. And instead of being like, well, crap, if I don't make it in two years, I'm not going to make it. Take that statistic and prove it wrong. Well, and I think, you know, going back to what we were talking about before is people, you know, are set up for failure right from the beginning when they didn't save money. They didn't know that it was going to cost money to get started. They also didn't know that it was going to take a little while to get business, get your leads and all that other stuff. Yeah. So they've already, now they've gone a couple of months with not bringing in any income. Well, now they're, you know, in that run stage where they're like, I'm just going to go get a bartending job. Right. I pick up and it's just to hold them over in their heads. They're like, oh, it's just going to hold me over. But then it's really hard to do both. Yeah. So use that statistic to motivate yourself not to get depressed by it. 
So Wendy's question is great and amazing. And I'm, I'm so happy. She asked, how do you set yourself apart as a new agent from the rest of the people um, to get yourself established? So I just want to take a second and answer that really quick. One of the big things is, is making it known that you are an agent and reaching out to people right away. One of the things they say is, you know, to start working your sphere. And that's what you need to do. You need to start introducing yourself to everyone, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your um, the people in your church, the people in your book club, um, at your daughter's soccer game. You need to let everybody know that you are in real estate and that you're happy to help them. Um, you're happy to um, share how the market is going. You need to start developing those conversations because just like Athena said, like, um, you know, people forget you. They're not loyal to you and all that stuff. So if you're the person that's in their face, then you're the one they're going to go to. Yeah. And I think that this is probably a really good time for you specifically, Wendy, um, to really dig in before you start dealing with clients who might not be nice or before you start dealing with mm -hmm. clients who, you know, might be a struggle. Find out like deep inside, like ask yourself, why do I want to be an agent? Like, what is my reason for wanting to do this? And let that be the reason that stands out to you, you know, to your clients and share that with people. Um, finding your times, niche. Yeah. A lot of times agents just want to share market stats and I, they want to brag about themselves. I sold this house in 24 hours. Yeah. So did 99% of the MLS yesterday. That's not something you share anymore. Standing out is sharing what's different about you and what your purpose is. And a lot are just are, are super boring. And they're not going to, people are not going to remember them. Can we go back to the soccer game thing real quick? I want to make a point. It. Do it. This is also what they don't tell you. They don't tell you how many, so you become a real estate agent, right? And then your circle kind of becomes real estate agents too, or people who are in this business. So they don't tell you, they say, oh, like, lead generate at your kids' sporting events or lead generate at your kids' events or schools or whatever. They don't mm -hmm. tell you that specifically for my case. My daughter's coach is the hut, the spouse of a very a local common estate. appraiser in this area. The other coach is the husband of another real estate agent in this area. And then on the next field over is a lender that we use sometimes. And her spouse is a home inspector. Literally on that one soccer field, we mm -hmm. could transact an entire real estate transaction because all of the people are there on one Thursday night for one hour. Yeah. That's how connected this real estate world is. They don't tell you that stuff either. That's also a very good reason why you should always be kind and nice to everybody <laughs> and not be an asshole because okay. this all comes full circle and you don't want to be the person who's hiding in your car because you're an <laughs> asshole during a transaction. It's a very small world in real estate. Right. And it has to be that way in every city. I don't think it's just in our little town. Um, so some other things that they don't tell you in real estate, they don't tell you that sometimes you're going to show homes that are foreclosures, they have no power and it's nighttime. And now you are using the flashlight built into your phone to show homes. They don't tell you that the home, um, has tons of odor. They don't tell you that it's a hoarder home. They don't tell you that you could be kidnapped in the back alley. There are lots of things they don't tell you about the homes in pre-licensing. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of stuff. A <laughs> lot of stuff. And I hope you take notes about it so that you can tell other people about it too. And clients will stand you up when you're at these shitty houses sometimes yeah, too. They too. There, it's, there it is like no it's always the houses that are so far away too. It's not the ones that Absolutely. are in your neighborhood. It's the ones that you had to drive an hour to get to. And they're like, oh, Sorry, I saw it earlier with another agent. Clients are not loyal to you. They are not. So you have to prove your worth over and over and over. You have to stay in contact with them and love on them all the time because they're not loyal. If you sell them a home 
and then a, a real estate agent is their neighbor, that's the person they're going to see all the time. That's when that's right. coming to their cookouts and their barbecues and everything else, playing with their kids at the playground around the corner. So if you don't stay in their face, they're not loyal. They'll move on. Yeah. There so is that, no that's loyalty hard. in real estate. There's just not. You think there's going to be all this loyalty and you're like, oh, I'm going to create this big group. And you learn very quickly that there's just no loyalty in real estate. Yep. So um, you're also going to experience a lot of rejection. And that's super hard. Um, it, it really depends on your personality. Some people are like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep moving on. This girl, no. I take that stuff so deep and I wear it on my sleeve sometimes for a week, sometimes for a month, sometimes six years later. I'm still really upset because somebody told me no. Um, but it is something you have to work on and you have to overcome in order to be a good agent. It's, yeah. it's a struggle. Um, you just have to work through it. And sometimes it's not about you. You know, like, I mean, sometimes like people reach out to me on Facebook and I'm talking to them. I send them to a lender and then I check in with them and all of a sudden then they block me on Facebook. Like I didn't do anything to them. But you know what happened probably? They couldn't qualify for a loan and now they're embarrassed. Right. So it feels like they rejected me because they blocked me and now they don't want to be my friend, but it wasn't about me. <laughs> yeah. How about there's, you know, I think you had this happen not too long ago. You actually reached out to somebody um, who is a real estate agent and you reached out to them with a real estate question only to find <laughs> out that you had tried to help them buy a yeah. house like what, seven or eight years ago? Yep. Yep. And now, and now you work in the same yeah. field together, doing transactions together. That's crazy. Yeah, that was funny. And, and yeah. And I saw that, because when you send them a message, then you can see your previous communication, yeah. which was. Not that that's a rejection yeah, story necessarily, years ago. but it's just crazy how people come and go. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. They will come and go forever. Um, the market is always changing and you need to stay on top of it and continue training. They don't tell you that you're never going to have all the answers, that you have to continue to grow. And, you know, yesterday, Athena and I were talking and she was like, you know, real estate is a very unique business because it offers unlimited amounts of trainings all across. So you can always be perfecting your niche or um, your market. So it's really that's kind of a cool thing and a bad part because they don't tell you that you're going to be spending a lot of money every year on trainings um, with your local like renewing your licenses and doing the CE updates and that sort of stuff. But the cool part is, is that you can always get trainings in specific areas like a military relocation professional or a short sale expert or a luxury agent. Yeah. So the training is good stuff and bad stuff sometimes. Yeah. When we log off of here, I'm so excited for today. Um, when we log off of here, I have two classes scheduled today. Um, one of them is talking about converting leads and how it's changing in the changing market. And then the other one is talking about 100% financing in this crazy ass market, in this market where so many people are coming in strong with cash or huge down payments or appraisal gaps. Hello, we have a whole group of people who still need somewhere to live. If you right. are a military client, if you are connected to the military in any way, shape or form, or you live near a base or, um, you might be a military spouse, you might be a veteran yourself, or maybe you live in a rural area and you have USDA loans. This big buyer season is about to hit and we need to figure out how to get through that. So my butt will be sitting in my office, in my chair, figuring that out because we have to keep learning. When this market shifts and changes, we have to be on top of it. We got and just because they don't have cash, they still need somewhere to live. So, so that was now gosh, that was passionate, but I'm just so excited about those classes. They're going to be so much fun. So now we're going to change it around a little bit and do some. Yeah, of the that good was kind stuff. of depressing. We're going to do can't some be of the that bad, stuff. or else we wouldn't have this many agents around. Well, that's why a lot of them don't stay. But <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so let's my, jump into some fun stuff. Some good. Stuff. Okay, my 
favorite, favorite, favorite. And I'm so glad to start with this. My favorite thing about being a real estate agent is that my clients, nine times out of 10, become my friend. Like we go out on the boat together and we go have drinks together and we can meet for chips and salsa and margaritas. And they call me when they need help. They call me when they need a referral for something. My clients become my friends. Yeah. Why am I always paying for friends? They paid you. Everywhere I go, I'm paying for friends. Nope, they they paid you. (laughs) Seriously, I have some of my best friends because I helped them with a real estate transaction. Right. Or multiple real estate transactions. Yep. Um, so we talked about this a little bit on the negative side of how, you know, you got into real estate thinking you could make your own hours. But when you have worked your butt off and you have created a real legit business, you can make your own hours in the sense that, you know, if you want to take Sundays off every week, then you take Sundays off every week. You can change your voicemail and say, I'm sorry, I am out of the office. I will return your call Monday at 9 a.m. You can create an established business. And real estate is a really cool business because you can legit make it what you want. And you can make it a giant business and have a bunch of agents. You can create you know, with these new brokerages and, you know, that are are developed now, like you can create, you know, um, teams across the world, not even just across the U.S. You can have an agent in Belize under you if that's what you want. You can, um, you know, have your license in multiple states. Real estate is very cool that, you know, what the effort is that you put into it or what you want it to be, you can make it be. Um, Yeah, you're literally a business owner. So you do what you want. If you want to take a vacation, You don't submit a request a month ahead of time and hope that it gets approved. You schedule your vacation and then you hold on tight because all the clients are going to start calling you. Um, Or if you have to run out because your daughter got sick or your son got sick at school, um, something happened at your husband's work and he needed a ride. Like you go and you deal with what you need to deal with. You don't ask for permission. You just go. And then you pick it up at the end of the day. Um, Or if you need to take a morning off because you're tired, take your morning off. Just follow up and do the job that you need to do. Like, don't leave your clients hanging because you want to take a nappy. That's right. But if you need to take a nappy, take your nappy and then follow up later. And be like, I'm so sorry. I was in an appointment. You own your business. So own your life. Yeah. That was good. (laughs) Write it down. Um, you help people achieve their dreams. You help people build wealth as in, you know, their home. You can, they, they're creating equity. They're selling their home and they're making a profit. You're getting people into the home of their dreams. Or on the other side, you're helping people create their own business by bringing them onto your team or helping them grow their real estate career. You know how I was just saying real estate is such a unique thing and you can make it whatever you want. Like my goal for my team is to have everybody that's on my team be extremely successful in whatever that looks like for them, build their teams and create generational wealth all across the board, right? So you're just making dreams happen all across the place. And you're solving problems. I guarantee you that the clients that call you, whether they're your sphere, whether they're Zillow, um, a referral from another agent, they're going to call, they're not going to call you and say, okay, I want to go buy one, two, three main street. Here's my down payment. Here's my escrow money. Um, I'm just going to waive the inspection because I'm not worried about anything. I'm going to fix it all. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and close in 10 days because I found this cash on the side of the road. They don't Let's call just you wrap that, that they, up in a bow. <laughs> right. They call you and they say, well, I really want to buy a house now, but I still own a house here. And um, also I'm waiting for this money to come in because I just filed my taxes, but I should be able to, they're going to tell you everything that's wrong and why they can't buy the house. And it's your job to help them figure out how to buy it anyways. Or, you know, I'm scared because uh, the base housing list is so long and I want to make sure that we have a house, but we still have to live here. You are the problem solver to everything. And then once you're under contract, 
when they get the home inspection report and it's really scary because they've never bought a home before, you're the problem solver. You call the contractor, you walk them through the whole thing and show them how we're going to fix all these things that sounded so scary, but they're really not. Yeah. Um, when the lender finds a hiccup because they forgot to file their taxes, guess what? Sometimes you get in the car and you drive to the local IRS place and you pick up a certified copy of taxes. I've done it. <laughs> we solve problems and it feels good. Like it okay. really feels good when you can, at the end of the night, go to bed knowing that you solved someone else's problems for them and that they appreciate you for it. And you can be so creative in real estate. Like you can be creative in now this is, I mean, it obviously it depends what type of brokerage you're at and stuff, but you know, you can be creative with your branding. You can be creative with your niche, your market, what you do, what you specialize in, who you work with. Um, a lot of businesses don't allow that sort of creativity and freedom for your business. So that is phenomenal. If you find like working at a traditional brokerage doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you being on a traditional team and stuff. There are so many opportunities out there to turn that around and make it work for you. That's what I did. And that's what anybody can do if they want to. I don't like being put into a box. I don't like being restrained. I don't like being told I can't do something. So in real estate, I can do whatever I want almost. With I'm, over here, That's <laughs> I'm over here giggling because the movie Office Space is going through my head right now where Jennifer Aniston has her, what, is, what do they call it? The swag <laughs> or the bling. They call it something, but it's like her little sash that she wears at the bar that has all of her little pins. And the guy's like, you don't have enough pins on. And she's like, I like the pins I have. I don't know. That's what I'm giggling over here about and having a really hard time controlling it because now I need to go home and watch Office Space. <laughs> and find Perfect. My <laughs> Perfect. Um, you also get to choose who you work with. That is unlike any other job out there. Now, are there consequences to choosing who you work with? Sure. If you choose not to work with somebody, you don't get a commission check at the end. You Unless. can get a referral. You can get a referral fee. Yep. If you meet somebody, if you get a lead and they're just not right for you, you might think that it's better to just suck it up and get through the transaction, but it's not. Find them the right person to work with because they deserve it. And also, it's not right worth person. it's not worth a bad review or getting no. sued. No. Find somebody that meshes with their personality, send them off, make a new friend out of that new agent. Collect your referral fee and focus your positive energy on finding a new client. You can't be and the perfect okay. fit for everyone. Yeah, you get to choose. That's another thing about like having like your niche market is that when you when you really focus on one type of client, those are the clients that are attracted to you. Um, and then those are the your clients refer you to their friends who are typically very similar to them. So you really do get to choose. It's not like McDonald's where you serve every person that comes up. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just really like having the ability to work with happy people. That's right. And like, Athena, person. and like Athena was saying about, you know, picking your own niche, you can pick whatever niche you want to specialize in. If you love horses and you know so much about how much land you need or the resources you need around it, you can be, you know, an equine. Never mind, it's lost. Um, you, thank you, <laughs> specialist. <laughs> and um, there's a real need for that right now, by the way. Yes. Yes. That um, agricultural if, market. If you are, you know, experienced in boating and waterfront, um, you can specialize in waterfront lifestyle or coastal lifestyle. Um, if you're specialized in land, you can be a land specialist, a beach specialist, farmland. Um, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Military, you can specialize in uh, helping people with the VA loan. Um, new construction. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of stuff that you can specialize in. So it's a great time for you to take anything that you're passionate about or anything that you have a lot of knowledge about and use it and make it your specialty. Yeah. I like it. Would you like to do the next one, Athena? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, <laughs> if you're <laughs> Hello. Work, you're next. But if you're willing to work I for just, it. I just said to specialize in, you're next. If you're willing to work for it, though, yeah. the income is literally unlimited. It's unlimited. You can make as much money as you want if you work for it. Um, one of the other things that you can do is you can move your career around with you. Like you don't have to restart every time you go somewhere like some people do. If you yeah. have a traveling spouse or a military spouse, um, you literally can just pick up your career and keep going. You have to figure out like what classes you need to do. Um, but it's really easy to move it on and you don't have to restart like some people do. Yeah. So that's pretty cool too. Yep. And it's just, even with the unlimited hours that you can do and stuff, the, the income can be unlimited based off of what you do. If you want to, you know, work a lot, if you don't want to work a lot, if you, you know, have these specializations and stuff, the, the more you work or the more you put into your business and develop the systems and, you know, grow your business, the possibilities of income are completely limitless. Yeah. Um, and you're always surprised, like nothing's ever the same. Um, just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. You haven't seen it all. There's always something new coming up. Always something new. <laughs> so that takes us to like, there is a lot of really funny things that happen in real estate. And just like Athena said, when you think you've seen it all, you probably haven't. And I think that you should be writing down all the crazy crap that happens to you and saving it for later because maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you want to put it in a video. Maybe you want to share, you know, the bloopers and all that stuff and put it on your social media and stuff. People love, love bloopers. Love it. You have I to be careful how you share it, but they do love it. I think one day um, we need to one show time I So <laughs> I showed, I got a Zillow lead, okay? All of my crazy stuff starts with Zillow. <laughs> bomb, bomb. <laughs> but I, the guy, this was at a different time in our market. So like we had like eight or nine houses to go and see. And he was looking for waterfront property, like kind of out in the middle of nowhere um, because he wanted privacy and he wanted a lot of space, right? So we had like seven properties lined up and it just, there wasn't a lot of cell phone service. I knew that going into this area. Um, but it just made sense for us to ride together because he didn't know the area and I was afraid we would get separated and this and that. So all is fine. We meet at the office. We do a buyer consultation. Everything looked great. Then he gets in my car with a cooler. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay. So I start driving. All is gray, and this cooler is like sitting in the back seat, staring at me. So then we get to a couple of houses, and he just said a couple of things that I was like, "Hey." <laughs> so finally, we're going into like one of the last houses, and he's like, "So, does this box that you put your coat in, does it like tell people when you open and close it?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." As soon as I put the coat in, listen. As soon as I put the coat in. It notifies like the board office, like the Newburn board office of like all these agents that I opened it. And then I have to put a code in to close it too, so that it knows that it's all for agent safety. Please don't harvest my organs. Um, and it was really creepy. But anyways, it turned out that he was diabetic and I'm an asshole. And <laughs> he just had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He did not want my organs. <laughs> But I also really think that, that we should tell everybody that everybody on our team, because this was years and years ago when there were several of us that were all on the team, and everybody had me as their emergency contact <laughs> on the agent safety app for connecting when they do the lockbox. So 
Athena had pushed the button of like, <laughs> I, I don't know what it, I don't remember what it's 911, basically. No, no. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, um, I, I don't know because you and Sarah were constantly sending them to me, but I don't remember what it comes up and it's like safety alert <laughs> for Athena or something. And I already <laughs> knew where she was. So then of course I'm like texting her and text her like, are you okay? Everything okay? But of course the home that she's showing is like a really far away and she does shit for service. So and they're on the water. So all anybody had to do was tie a brick to my ankle and I'm gone. So it's full panic mode of like, are you alive? <laughs> and waiting for her to shut the alert off. <laughs> that same time I showed, like we went and looked at a log cabin and the log <laughs> cabin did not have power like you talked about earlier. And it had this doll like a raggedy and doll like sitting on the stairs no. staring at me and I'm like no. oh my god this is how it's gonna end <laughs> this is how it ends oh my gosh that's so funny did you end up selling him a house no <laughs> wow <laughs> I did not. um so I have a funny story the I had my house for sale and my no I just had my neighbor's house for sale at this time the agent who sold me my house at that time, she was the listing agent. I was the buyer's agent of my home, was showing the house next door to a couple because she was working with them as a buyer's agent. Well, she calls me because I'm the listing agent and I live next door. So she calls me and she's like, um, Jess, I have a problem. And I'm like, oh, no, what's wrong? And she says, um, one of my clients is stuck in the shower. next door. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. Um, and, and she's, it is a glass door shower. Um, and I was confused as to how or why and, and lots of different things at this time. And then I guess the wife comes running out and says that he made it up. And I am trying not to laugh so hard in my entire life. After they leave, I go over there to find out how in the world you get stuck in the shower. I cannot even imagine something like that happening. Can you imagine if the fire department had to come and get this man out of the shower? Can you imagine what the, or what the buyer's agent was thinking when she called? Like she had to be in pure panic to call you, the listing agent. To say yes. that, like she had to, in her head, had to have been thinking, oh my God, like we're going to have to take the door off. <laughs> we're going to have to get a crane or something. Like, what are we going to do? Like, do you think at that break point the, glass? The, the buyer would have to buy the house or? Well, if you break it, you buy it. That's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, I think so. Do you um, have some more fun stories to share with us? I do. One time I showed a house. <laughs> And at the time, actually, like, I think this was, this is just, again, indicative of the market that we were in at the time. I'm pretty sure I was on showing number 45 for these particular clients. So it couldn't have been clients any less likely to be annoyed by this. But we get there and I counted 17 cats in and around oh the property. 17 cats. There were more, but that's who I could, like, count and identify. <laughs> So I call the listing agent because they actually really liked the location of the house and houses don't list there very often. So I call and I'm like, hey, like my clients are a little concerned about the cats that are here. Um, and this was also in a market where it mattered what your buyer thought. Um, but they were like, oh, just write it into the offer that the cats need to be removed ahead of time. <laughs> like, hey, what world do you think about writing into an offer that... 17 cats have to be removed from the property before you. So I wonder, them. Athena, if, if you were to write that offer in this market, do you think that you would write in there and be like, all the cats can stay <laughs> as a bet yes. to the seller? <laughs> That's better than paying for their title insurance. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Our world. I have another one that's really funny and it involves Jess too. Do you have more? Do you want to say anything else? Um, well, I do have the one time where we had this house that was cute as a button and it just had like terrible karma, I guess, because it took, we were on our second buyer and the day before closing and the buyer's agent calls me because I'm the listing agent and says, Jess, I'm so sorry, um, but we have to terminate. And 
I'm like, what, what in the world? We were paying for repairs. We were doing all this crazy stuff. And he says, um, well, the buyer has uh, checked herself into rehab and cannot proceed with purchasing the home. Yeah. I mean, you can't sign legal documents. And well, what do you do about like that? that? I mean, I mean, you can't, you can't argue with any of that stuff, but okay. Well, you can't be mad. Let's listen. Here we are though. Back on the market. Um, so I think this is a great one to kind of close this off with. And just a reminder to make sure to take agent safety seriously because it's while very this is funny, it could have been really bad. It really could have been. Um, so I'm telling it We've to be funny. We've learned our lessons. Yeah, I'm telling it to be funny, but please take into consideration that this stuff really happens. Use your people. agent safety and, and uh, send your friend just there is, a message if you're unsafe. There's no lead worth your life correct ever and I, we talked about it earlier and we're like if you don't answer that zillow lead or that realtor.com lead like someone else will and that's true but don't put yourself so i was on my way out of town and i got a zillow lead and the person was like oh, i need to see it right now and it was a foreclosure so it was going to move quickly um and i wanted to just deal with it instead of having it over my head all weekend of trying to come back and um so i go ahead and i'm like okay i'll meet you there I'll be there in about 30 minutes. So I get there and I pull up and the, when I pull up, there's a group of like three men standing at the door and something just triggered. And I was like, mm, you know what? This isn't right. So I roll my window down like the littlest bit, like as if I was getting pulled over for a DUI, I roll my window <laughs> down that much. And I'm like, Hey, I'm so sorry. I forgot the code at my office, I'm going to drive back and I'm going to get it. So I just backed out and I had no idea what to do at that time. I'm like, uh, what do I do? So I called Jess because that's what I do when I don't know what to do. And <laughs> so I drove around in a circle. I'm like, I don't know what to do. These people, like, I don't feel comfortable showing them the house by myself. Um, something just feels off. So Jess and her husband were actually driving around so they met me. In the meantime, I pull my car into a parking lot. I text the person. I'm like, hey, just getting the code. I'll be right back. So sorry I scooted out so quickly. I didn't want them to know that I didn't feel comfortable, um, but I did not feel comfortable. So I waited in the little parking lot until I see Jess coming up behind me, and I go back. And they followed me behind in their car. And I get there, and I go ahead, and I let them in, and then like five Probably three to five minutes later, Jess and her husband come in as if they're showing the house too. And we're in the house and I'm showing them the house. They're not talking directly to me. They're talking to each other very quietly and I can't really hear what's being said, um, <laughs> but they're not actually speaking to me. And um, so we close it up and the guy's like, okay, I want to, Jess and Tony come in and they're like, hey, we're looking at the house too. And the guy's like, why are they here? Oh, because we can let other people see the house too. So then um, we're closing up the house. Jess and Tony leave to go on their way. We're closing it up. And um, the guy's like, okay, I want to buy the house, but I need you to meet me back here later on. And I was like, to do the paperwork. And I was like, no, we can do it all online. He's like, no, I'm only signing in person. I need you to meet me back here. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm on my way out of town. You're going to have to sign electronically. I'll be happy to get everything over to you. So then we're leaving and um, basically Tony says to me, did you see the guy in the back seat? I didn't. There was literally the three men that were in the house with me. But then in addition, there was another person who was in the back seat, slouched down, hiding. I don't know what the intentions are. I really don't. Um, I can make light of it now and kind of laugh that I called you know, Jess and Tony, and they came to my rescue like the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, <laughs> agent, agent, uh, agent safety serious to take up. It is. It, it's really important. And it's definitely something that everybody needs to take very serious. And, um, you know, like Athena said, you know, we can make light of it now, but we've all been in sticky situations that we shouldn't have. And we have learned from those lessons and yeah. are much better behaved agents now. 
Um, before we go today, which was super fun. That was um, a good little break from reality. It was. I or really enjoyed maybe it. Maybe a tune into reality. Or yeah, a good reality check. Um, but before we go today, I just want to remind everybody that we are in the middle of doing our 30 day listing challenge. So I will be live in the group at one o'clock to do day two of the five day jumpstart. Um, and if everybody wants to participate, they need to post their daily tasks completions in each day's post. So we're super excited. We're going to see everybody next Tuesday. Um, and I will see everybody in the group later today for our challenge day. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, friends.